Okay, we should be we should be live now on YouTube. Should be live now. Should be live now on YouTube. Will come up shortly. Anytime now. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Ya keluar dah Datuk Hairul. Ya, okay. You are live. We are streaming to the world now. <laughs> All right. I can see people start coming in. So let's wait. Ah, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You are live. You are live. We are streaming. Oh, oh, kita punya kita punya phone kita kena mute. Tidak can see Dr. Abbas from Solat from School of Language. All right. Um, let's give another uh, maybe two minutes then we will start the session. So please bear with us uh, about two minutes to let the people in. Then we will start up. We will start the session um, shortly. We already have our speaker uh, online, as you can see on the screen, Dr. Hyrol. I will introduce him uh, shortly. So please make yourself comfortable, sit back, and relax. <laughs> you miss miss that announcement. <laughs> we are all grounded. I will start the session in uh, one minute. Then, while waiting for uh, people to join in, I hope everyone can hear me. Can can hear us um, clearly. Can see the the picture or the video also clearly. Most important is the audio. And you can start actually posting your questions on the chat. Just ask, feel free to ask any questions related to issues of copyright and plagiarism. And we, we will do our best to answer all the questions. All right, it's two minutes past three. Um, I think I will start the session. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sejahtera and hello everyone. Thank you for joining our session this afternoon. My name is Abdul Karim Alias from University of Science Malaysia and with me this afternoon, a special invited guest uh, from also from USM, from the Science Malaysia, our legal advisor, Dr. Hyrule. 
Um, I will introduce him um, before I pass over the session to him. Okay, uh, for your information, those who just uh, joined in, uh, we are actually streaming from Zoom. So we are actually in the Zoom session and we actually stream live this Zoom session to YouTube, okay? And um, this session also will be recorded. Uh, so those who miss this session today live can always come back and watch the watch the recorded um, version on YouTube. And you can still post the questions uh, later after the session. And I hope maybe Dr. Khairul can, you know, um, still answer those questions after the live session, okay? Because sometimes you cannot think of the question to, 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 to ask during the session, okay? All right, um, before, so let me just uh, share my screen first. So once again, uh, welcome all of you to this YouTube live session. This is a series on teaching online during COVID-19 time. Uh, and this particular session is actually focused on Q&A on the topic of understanding copyright and plagiarism. Why are we having this topic? Because as you know, all of us now, um, especially those lecturers, teachers, educators, all of us have to go online now it's no longer an option because we have to carry on teaching our classes. Uh, the semester is still, uh, you know, is still progressing. So now with everyone going online and teaching online, the one of the main concerns is actually about copyright, plagiarism. And these are the questions that I keep uh, receiving from, especially from USM uh, academic staff, from lecturers. And, uh, this is actually understandable because copyright and plagiarism are actually common uh, issues, especially when we are dealing with online material, online resources. And plagiarism especially has been rampant and has been uh, kind of uh, a pin point for, for us to deal with. So how do we, I'm sure many of us having these uh, issues and questions on many aspects of copyright and plagiarism. So that's the reason today uh, I organized this session and I have invited uh, Dr. Khairul Lanoa Chiazmi, our USM's legal and IP advisor. So who's better to answer all these questions uh, than the expert uh, himself? You can see he, he's online now. And um, Dr. Khairul Lanoa, uh, JSP in his capacity as a USM legal advisor, he, he does a lot of things. Uh, he's in charge of the legal uh, office. We call him uh, PU, PUU. Uh, sometimes I confuse also. Pegawai undang-undang or pejabat undang-undang. So PUU is a pejabat undang-undang. Uh, I would like Dr. Khairul to say more about his role. Uh, but uh, Dr. Khairul actually did his PhD in... Uh, intellectual property. Uh, maybe he can tell you exactly what area on, on, on intellectual property. So he's the right person to ask about uh, anything about IP, pattern, trademark, all those things. But today, uh, please don't ask that question because we are focusing only on copyright and plagiarism. Okay. So feel free to post your questions now. So along the way, we will pick up the questions. Then we'll try to address all the questions. So this is how the session will be uh, will be conducted uh, this afternoon. Uh, after this, I will pass the session to Dr. Khairul. He will start with a brief uh, presentation, uh, probably about 10 slides to give the overview of copyright and plagiarism. And meanwhile, we can start posting your questions. Then after he has done a very short present sharing or presentation, we will look at the questions and we will pick up the question and Dr. Khairul will be, will, will be answering those questions. And uh, what is my role? My role is basically a host. <laughs> so I'm actually less stressed today, uh, but um, I'm also here 
probably I, uh, I would be able to answer questions related to um, what, we call, what we call is uh, Creative Commons, open licensing, Creative Commons license, uh, those uh, related to usage of digital material. So maybe uh, if, if you have questions on this, I hope I can, I will be, uh, probably I will be able to answer that. Before I pass over to Dr. Hyrule, I just want to show or to share with you uh, this slide only. When um, in USM, actually we conduct uh, one day, full day workshop actually on copyright, but not by Dr. Hyrule, but by, my, by myself. Uh, of course, uh, the thing that I know and I, I practice, but basically we cover all these aspects that you can see on the slides uh, now. Uh, basically, we you know define what is copyright, fair use. Dr. Hyrule will focus on fair use, especially today, public domain, and what are the exclusive rights that that covered under so-called uh, copyright, the all rights reserved. Then, uh, what is fair use? So. Fair use actually is very important to understand, although it's not always very clear black and white, but it's good to understand fair use so that we know the scope that how we can use uh, the material within the educational context. Then Creative Common. So um, I know a little bit more about Creative Common. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to ask. And I'll be sharing with you also this module. The link to this module will be given under the video in the description. Uh, I will do that after the sessions uh, ended. So I'll, I will give you access to this module. Of course, it's FOC, free of charge. Uh, unless if you want to pay me, uh, by all means, <laughs> just joking. All right, so this is actually the module that I use for our training in USM. So we will give this uh, to, to the participants and I will share the link down below the video after the session. I think that's all for me. So time to pass to Dr. Hyrule. I will stop the screen sharing now. So Dr. Hyrule, you can take over from now. And maybe you want to briefly introduce yourself what you are doing in USM and uh, you can start a brief uh, sharing presentation on your part. Silakan, Dr. Hyrule. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Karim. Um, thank you for, also for the first introductions before I start. I guess, um, let me share some of the backgrounds uh, of what we are going to do today. But before that, uh, as um, you, you have said just now that I need to introduce myself, a uh, uh, brief introduction about myself. Um, uh, my background, uh, I was an advocate and solicitor back in 1997 uh, in, until 2003, 2004. Um, uh, I have the opportunity to uh, to be the solicitors in South Australia for four years while accompanying my wife doing her PhD. Uh, back in 2007, um, came back to Malaysia. Um, 2009, I did my master's um, under intellectual property. Um, bear in mind that um, while I was practicing in Australia, I have some backgrounds uh, in intellectual property, particularly on patents. Um, in 2012, I did my doctorate. Um, and then my, uh, my field is uh, mostly in intellectual property as well as in the uh, corruption field. So these are my two fields, um, uh, to be honest. Uh, with all. Uh, I was also uh, during my, uh, I started working with USM back in 2008. My first appointment was a senior intellectual property advisors to USM. So um, that was the post I, I hold until 2013. So 2013, I was um, appointed as the USM legal advisor but still I'm keeping in touch with my, with the, all the IPs of the universities. So um, that's some of my brief backgrounds. Let's uh, start with the session today. Um, to be honest, this was, uh, this is my first um, sessions using Zoom. With your guidance, uh, Prof. Karim, um, yeah. ho hopefully that 
is uh, my first experience will be good one. <laughs> okay, um, so I will be covering um, uh, the overview on copyright and plagiarism because there are many myths on copyrights and also the understanding on plagiarism. Sometimes it been used uh, not in the correct perspective, particularly uh, when it comes to plagiarism. So before we start, answering uh, all those issues, concerns, and uh, questions from the uh, participants. I guess, uh, let us understand first what is copyright and what is plagiarism, okay? Datuk Khalil is in the house. Yeah, I saw Datuk Khalil <laughs> uh, in the house. He's also experts in copyright, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. All right. Go copyright ahead. and plagiarism. Let, let us start um, discussing um, more on this copyright and plagiarism. As you can see, copyright is a legal right vested to uh, those authors create who those authors who has created the original work. Okay, and this rights has been conferred to the author by law. So there is a copyright law, 1987. Uh, whereby most of the countries in the world, they do have the Copyright Law, Copyright Act. In our case, in Malaysia, we do have Copyright Act 1987, which covers that uh, legal rights vested to these authors. Bear in mind, copyright is automatically conferred upon creations. Means that once you have created something original in Malaysia, it is automatically created you don't really need to file copyright. Although some of us may be aware that there is a, a, an organization called MIPO, M-Y-I-P-O, Malaysia Intellectual Property Office, who, uh, uh, where you can file um, a copyright by spending roughly about 37 to 38 dollars, 38 ringgit, uh, in order to file it. But under the law is not required because it's automatically uh, conferred once you have created some original works. It doesn't matter whether it is in writing or in tape, recording, etc. So we'll look at further on this copyright. Um, whereby plagiarism is something else, whereby you are taking some someone else work and acknowledge it as yours without giving any citations or acknowledgement. But the main important things, the difference between copyright and plagiarism is that, is that copyright is only, copyright is, uh, you can sue someone under copyright in court, but you cannot sue someone for plagiarism in court. This is because copyright has the his, his own act, APTA, whereby plagiarism is only an academic uh, things whereby it requires academic sanctions in order to punish those who plagiarize somebody else. Okay, um, so it cannot be enforced in court for plagiarism, whereby copyright, uh, on the other way around, is that it is enforceable in court, you can claim for damages, ganti rugi in court uh, from someone who has stolen your works, your articles, uh, your music, etc. Okay, so they are, uh, this is the main difference between copyright and plagiarism. Um, I need to repeat, copyright is enforceable in court whereby plagiarism is only applicable in the academic field, okay? So, uh, to make it further, uh, these two words of copyright and plagiarism are always are the common words that has been um, used by us. Doesn't matter whether we are academics or laymen, we use the word copyright and plagiarism. But to academics, there are also other words that we associated with this copyright and plagiarism. Um, yes, we, we, we have been uh, hearing about this academic dishonesty term. We have been uh, using the word cheating 
stealing, the students cheating, the student has been stealing someone else's work, academic crime, okay, denial of academic, academic ethics, and the last one, um, may not many, many, many of us may not heard about it, academic adultery uh, or uh, Zina academic. So these are those uh, associated words or uh, um, uh, to reflect a uh, similar degree of uh, issues of copyright and plagiarism. So under copyright law, Copyright Act 1987, these are the, the areas that have been covered under copyright. So to be honest, copyright is much more broader than plagiarism because plagiarism is limited to academic. So if you are talking about, um, um, for example, games, maps, etc., it can be protected under copyright, may not be protected under plagiarism because unless it is a academic, it's a part in a, it is a specific academic field uh, of um, uh, maps or, or some particular arts example. But generally, plagiarism covers thesis, books, journals, articles, lecture notes, PowerPoint, assignment, online learning, uh, such as. Uh, but copyright, it covers much more broader terms. Um, we are here because of this press statement. Because uh, there is now a need for us to understand further what is uh, about the online assessments, online learning, whether it may contradict or breach any of copyright law. Is it a plagiarism, uh, simple plagiarism? Is it uh, what are kinds of plagiarism? There are, of course, there are different types of plagiarism. There are gravities, different gravity of plagiarism, different kinds of copyright. Um, etc. But bear in mind just now, uh, copyright is only enforceable in court. As such, if any one of us here want to have um, uh, just an academic sanctions of pass or fail, uh, copyright may not be relevant at all. Plagiarism may be relevant. Okay? Because copyright, you need to enforce the right in court. Uh, it's not a simple thing of um, um, accusing someone else for breaching the copyright and want him to be failed. Okay, uh, so uh, if, uh, if that is the case, we can refer to other terms such as academic dishonors, uh, such as plagiarism, um, academic ethics, uh, etc. That can have um, the, the um, punitive uh, punishment such as uh, fail or being brought to the disciplinary actions. So we are here because of this press statement. And as such, we, many has asked, I guess, um, Prof Karim uh, about the word fair use or fair dealings um, rule, uh, whereby whether the students or we qualify to use some of the materials and if there is any issues, we can uh, invoke the fair use rule in order to protect us. Okay, so these are the issues uh, that we um, we are happy to discuss with you, uh, to provide to you the answers and see how it goes. And my last slide will be some myth first, whether we proceed further. There are five popular myths uh, says that, uh, look, if this thing happened, it may not be breach of copyright. Let us see one by one um, all, all the myth. First one, if it is on the internet, as such, it is in the public domain and therefore free, no. Even if it's, not, even if it's in public domain, uh, it may not be free. For, for example, if there is the word C, copyright, or, and, or uh, you may come across some uh, photos, images, uh, bearing the word jetty images, G-E-T-T-Y, jetty images, and or shutterstock, shutterstock, uh, shutterstock. This, uh, shutterstock, these are the images which you, if you want to use it, uh, you have to pay. 
So dev, it, it, it's, it's not free. So this is a myth. Not all the internet is free. Even our article, you put it in the internet, you need to uh, acknowledge it or you need to get consent. If there is no copyright notice, I can use the image. No. Uh, no, because uh, copyright is automatically upon creation. As, as such, you still need to get the consent from the, uh, from the owner. The problem is that you may not trace whereabouts of the owners. You may not know the owners at all. Or in most cases that we have, the owners doesn't care at all. So uh, if that's the case, you may try your luck. If the owners doesn't care, um, um, yeah. So you may be escaped from any any acquisitions of uh, breaching the copyright. If I alter the image, I don't need permission. No. If you even you alter the uh, the image, uh, if substantially you you may escape. But if you just alter the image, but uh, the original image prevail, uh, so it's still considered as a breach of copyright. The next myth is that if I don't profit from it, I can use it. No. Even if you don't uh, profit from it, if you use it, you still need to apologize for it. Okay. But if you have made some profit of it, of course, there will be some damages, uh, compensation for it. Uh, we have um, uh, come across a uh, few cases. One of it is that um, using the photos of uh, Penang scene. And as a result, uh, the original photographers of the photos asking uh, from the particular individuals um, uh, compensation for using his photos without authorizations. And the last one, if I only use a part of the image, I don't need permission. No, if, even if you use part of it, you still need the permission. So these are some myths uh, that, that um, applies to copyright and also uh, may be relevant uh, for our discussion for um, plagiarism. Um, Prof, I stop uh, um, with these slides, uh, okay. even though I have a few other slides to go, but these are among the overview for plagiarism and uh, copyright. Okay, Dr. Hyrul, thank you. Um, thank you for the sharing to give the overview about uh, copyright and plagiarism. Uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. Can you stop uh, screen sharing on your side? Yes, sure. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Done. All right. So thank you very much again. So we have uh, we are receiving uh, some questions now. So maybe we can go through from the top. Um, can you can you see the questions? Uh, yes. We okay. let's let's pick the. Um, It's not I saw from Prof. Madia. Dr. Lokman bin Ismail. Yeah, okay. Okay, at um, 1 19 p.m. Okay, let's so, start with this um, uh, question first. Yeah. Uh, Prof. Madia Dr. Lokman bin Ismail, using examples of problem solution from other books can be considered plagiarism. How can we go about that? Mm -hmm. Change the numbers, okay? Okay, look, the question asks, using examples of problem solution from other books, can it be considered plagiarism? If you are taking the examples in verbatim, the whole lot without any amendments, without any alterations at all, it may be amount, amount to plagiarism and also breach of copyright. Remember, because this is a book, okay, mm -hmm. the author of the book may want to enforce it in court, okay. But uh, uh, it is more relevant if we say that it's considered as breach of copyright. Okay. Um, why I, I say that it's not plagiarism? Because plagiarism, um, if it is it's going to be considered under plagiarism issue, um, the academic need to be, uh, the complainant need to lodge the complaint to the, to the university authorities. Okay. And as a result of that, uh, he complained, his complaint may be under plagiarism, not under copyright. And the university authority will take into consideration, start the investigation whether plagiarism really exists or not. And the punishment will be uh, the academic uh, post of the particular academician may be at jeopardy. 
okay because the uh, it may it may reach to the situations of disciplinary actions but it will not reach to the level of court because it, it, it is the complaint under plagiarism if it is complaint under copyright the author of the book simply bring the the academicians to the court and uh, for breach of copyright and ask for compensation okay uh, so this will be uh, two different ways of uh, resolving this issue of using examples of problem solution so how we can go about that if you are using these examples just do the citation cite it put acknowledgement to the to the uh, referring to the original book then it will not be considered as plagiarism and all and also it will not be considered as breach of copyright okay change the numbers is not sufficient change the number is not sufficient you may need to paraphrase it in order to avoid the whole allegations of plagiarism and or breach of copyright you need to do the whole paraphrasing okay bro okay uh, let's take a question from dr no azman the dr no azman from school of uh, medical uh, sciences in kelantan dr um, no azman uh, at 304 304 okay pm yeah he said, clinical yeah. clinical uh, Okay, uh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Clinical pictures and videos of patients when we publish on YouTube after taking consent, copyright belong to YouTube or to USM? Copyright belong to him individually. It's not belong to USM. The copyright of the clinical pictures belong to the individual itself. Okay, so uh, even though it's been published in YouTube, uh, the ownership of the photos still belong to the said individual the photographer so uh, when we publish on youtube after taking consent uh, it doesn't matter it's belong to the photographer uh the company <clears throat> if the photographer is also a staff of usm so the 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 copyright it, from my understanding uh, should it be a joint copyright under the photographer as well as USM? Okay. Um, under the copyright law, Copyright Act 1987, uh, if not mistaken, Section 11, it says clearly about the ownership of a particular uh, copyright items. For example, if we have a contract with uh, the employer, whatever that we do during the course of business will belong to the employer. Okay, in our case, as a staff of USM, it will belong to USM. Um, as, as, as what you have said just now, it belongs to USM. But under the law, it is also, uh, there is also another section of moral uh, ownership. Moral ownership still belongs to the individual photographer. Okay, I'm talking about, there are two uh, ownerships here. Uh, the first one is the ownerships, uh, moral ownerships, whereby it belongs to the uh, particular employee or particular individual. Mm -hmm. But uh, if he is under the contract employment with any organization, in our case, university, eventually it will belong to the university. So can we say that the university in this case has the legal uh, ownership in terms of copyright? but the person in this case has a moral uh, ownership. Yes. For example, a simple example is this uh, session. Uh, our sessions been done, let's say, uh, by you, Prof. Okay, mm -hmm. the uh, ownership uh, belongs to you mm -hmm. and even uh, maybe to myself. Mm -hmm. Not maybe, it's, it's, it's to myself because uh, your sessions uh, it will be uh, co-conduct uh, uh, between us, so yeah. it will be belongs jointly to us. Uh, but this session, USM can claim it uh, and use it at any time for any particular business of USM because we are still under the contract of employment of USM and we are doing it under the ordinary course of our job or of, of our business. So um, there are two ownerships here. One is that the, this Zoom belongs to mm -hmm. us uh, personally, 
and at the same time, um, in order to use it or uh, because of our contract of employment, it is also belong to USM because there are two categories of ownerships under the under the copyright law. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I mean, for, for the participant, if you want to get more clarification, please post the following up, the, the follow up uh, questions. Okay, um, let's take, uh, okay. Okay, uh, at 3.05, Jehana, Jehana, Ermi, Jamaluddin there, how can, how can we claim our right as creative commons? Oh, okay. Um, Shall, um, can can we defer all question regarding to Creative Commons later? Yeah, Dr. Hedol? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, no yeah. problem. Uh, yeah, now we will answer towards the end, yeah? I mean, a second part. Uh, okay, Gary here. Uh, there is no way to actually, at 307, <clears throat> 307, there is no way to actually monitor students if they have their own group chat in WhatsApp where they can communicate the answers for individual assignments, even if we go to 100% coursework. What's your take, uh, Dr. Hero? Okay, there's no way to actually monitor students if they have their own group chat in WhatsApp when they can communicate their answers to uh, for individual assignments, even if we go 100% coursework. Yes, it's right. Uh, we don't have the capability or capacity to, uh, to monitor them. Um, this is, uh, I think, the creativity of the student as well. Um, uh, they discuss and then, of course, uh, um, there will be a slim chance of all the answers to be exactly the same. Okay, there will be a very slim chance, but yeah, but I, 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 I this is my assumptions. Um, they will still write uh, something based on their communications, group communications. Uh, uh, but their individual assignments must at least vary uh, to each other. Um, but there is no breach of copyright. There is no plagiarism because actually they are doing discussions uh, in group. And we can't deny that their, um, their uh, answers may be uh, similar to each other because they are, they are discussing in one group. Hey, Dr. Herul, since Gary mentioned about WhatsApp, I think it's uh, almost a common uh, practice now. Uh, we do a lot of sharing through WhatsApp, you know, the pictures, everything. So um, sharing through WhatsApp, is it also being subjected to the same copyright law? Um, yes, to, 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 uh, we'll be subject, definitely. However, um, I can't see any of uh, this group WhatsApp will be uh, strictly adhere to copyright law because while we are typing, we are typing on our own. Uh, as such, this is our original uh, works, original communications, mm -hmm. and will not be subject to uh, copyright. What, what I meant by uh, it may be subject to uh, copyright law is that we are just forwarding or copy and paste others and claim as ours. Uh, this this may be subject to to to, to the uh, breach of copyright. But bear in mind, uh, you, you you have uh, raised a very important issues of um, um, uh, breach of copyright. To all, it is very easy to discuss or to allege somebody that you have been. Um, uh, breaching the copyright, you have taken mine as yours, you have not getting my consent, etc. And I will sue you. I will sue you, see you in court. This is a, 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 a very normal, ordinary circumstances. Uh, such words been uttered by those angry individuals against the other for stealing um, um, our words. But bear in mind, in order to enforce your right in court, Prof, first, you need to file your claims in court. Simply, you cannot file your claims in court uh, by yourself uh, because there are court procedures for it. As such, you need to engage a lawyer. To open up a, 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 a file at the lawyer's firm, 
it may cost you between 3000 ringgit to 5000 ringgit at least minimum depends on how senior or how experienced is the lawyers at the end of the day that is the uh, initial fees uh, to be paid to the lawyers but at the end of the day in order to enforce your right in court you may spend roughly about 8000 to 12000 just to enforce your right in, in court whereby the court may decide yes there is a copyright breach of it uh, the court agree with the plaintiff means you but at the end of the day the court award you 100 ringgit despite you have spent your money uh, for 10000 ringgit to pay the lawyers so it's not uh, worth it so <laughs> it's not worth it you are throwing good money after bad yeah so it's not worth it it's not worth it so it means that if the only case of valuable compensation amount mm -hmm. uh, then only uh, uh, we will suggest it to go to to, to court procedures otherwise matter of principles or what uh, i guess we need to advise properly to the particular plaintiff or to the particular individuals uh, how to enforce the rights in, in court it's not easy as it okay uh, shall we take more uh, some more questions sure. Um, sure. at 309 uh, lim siu chu uh, you see the question? Can I upload? Can up, I yeah. upload chapters of textbooks in Elan USM for US for student? Okay, is it against copyright? Okay, uh, two situations. This Elan book, uh, whether you uh, uh, when you have this Elan books, some of the books, for example, I uh, I, I know. Dr. Hyrule, Elan Elan is our uh, platform, our Elan uh, platform. Uh, uh, Elaning platform. Yeah, Tech, so uh, chapters so, of textbook in yeah, Elan. Yes, okay. we upload to our platform. You upload the textbook yeah, the in, in the, the chapters yeah. uh, in the platform. Mm. So in this case, when you upload it, have you got the consent from the textbook, the, the publisher? Uh, let's assume that she, she didn't get the consent. Okay, so uh, the, the platform itself uh, has the, res the first responsibility because mm. the platform itself has been uploading it without the, pub, the, the, the original publisher's consent. So we are the secondary, um, um, secondary user of it. We download it from the ELED. So uh, those uh, who has uploaded it on, this, uh, on the secondary stage, at the secondary stage, may not be liable for copyright breach. Uh, the ELED platform will be liable. But what I'm going to say, Prof, is when, when this eLearn platform has been uploading this textbook, normally this textbook have the implied consent allowing it to be uploaded in the textbook. For example, I knew, I know that there are some books, Pearson, for example, has been giving a CD, has been, they, they, they give CDs, they give, um, um, Thumb drive, for example, they have um, make it simple, uh, send it through emails to the our academicians, etc., so that they can use it. They, they even prepare the PowerPoint in order for the lecturers to use it in the classroom. So in this case, uh, you may not be, uh, uh, we may not realize that there is an implied or express uh, consent from the publisher allowing it to be uploaded in the ELAN platform. As such, this will not be contradicting any copyright law because they are either implied or expressed. Why I say implied? If the publisher pass you a CD, okay? Um, so in this case, it is always um, uh, uh, impliedly allowing the, the people to, to download it and to use it, okay. So that's that's how uh, it works for the for, for, for this question. But this question has a longer answers to go. Remember, just now we said about fair use. Yeah. Okay. Fair use is always applicable under uh, the. There are few exceptions uh, to the copyright law. 
and one of the exception is the fair use. If you use it for educations mm -hmm. in universities and no profit at all, you mm -hmm. will be entitled to use it and they will know it will not be regarded as breach of copyright. Okay, so um, let me share something to you, Prof. Okay. Go about ahead. this, this, this situation. Fair use, yeah. Fair use. Yeah. Under Please the copyright go act, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Under this copyright act, 1987, this is section 13, in uh, 13 two of copyright act 1987, 13.2. dua. If you look at uh, 13.2, this is the exceptions uh, whereby we can use, we will not uh, be, uh, it will not be considered as breach of copyright if it falls under this subsection 2. This subsection 2 is very long. It under, there are about almost 20 exceptions. But those uh, uh, relevant one is under FF and G. Let's look at the FF first. Okay, one of the exception is that any use of a work for the purpose of an examination by way of setting the questions, communicating the questions to the candidates or answering the questions will not be regarded as against copyright. Okay, this section 13, sub bracket 2, sub bracket double F, okay. And also, if you look at this uh, um, subparagraph G, the reproductions made in school, universities, or educational institutions of a work included in the broadcast intended for such schools, universities, or educational institutions. It may also fall under this subparagraph G. Okay, broadcast includes all those PowerPoints, etc., those communicated online. This is considered under broadcast. There is a definition of broadcast at the beginning of this Copyright Act 1987. Okay. So uh, these are the two exceptions that I would like to share with all that uh, in particular um, uh, to the question, can I upload chapters of textbook in Elan USM for students? Is it against copyright even if people allege you okay uh, do not worry uh, remember that there is an exception of fair use under education under universities okay under examinations and if they try if any one of them proceeds with uh, suing you let's uh, let your legal advisor know about it uh, and then because it falls under section 13 subsection 2 Okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's let's uh, look at the scenario uh, on the chapters uploading the chapters of book in our e-learning platform. Let's say the book is, has ten chapters, and I upload five out of ten chapters. Fifty percent of the chapters I uploaded into the e-learn platform. Would that still fall under the the fair use? Yes, it falls under fair use. It doesn't matter as long as uh, the, the main criteria for defense is that it's for education. And mm -hmm. the additional criteria that we will support you is that because you are non-profit. You didn't get any profit of it. Uh, people will say that profit may come in terms of promotions, may come in, may, may, may come in terms of image, image uh, reputations, etc. It doesn't matter because in law, it says profit. Profits means in terms of monetary, ah. monetary profits. So if if I'm I'm doing an online course now and I charge the participant for the course, then that would not be covered under fair use, right? Uh, okay, okay, yes, it's not be covered under fair use. But remember, mm -hmm. fair use also includes the uh, apologizing and withdrawing immediately upon notifications. Oh. Whatever that we do, sometimes we didn't know. Uh, that the outcome of it, okay? You thought that uh, the you have charged, for example, admission fee just to cover your cost for paying Zoom, 
subscribing Zoom or suggest subscribing for some technical things, etc. Technical persons who will assist you, etc. But this is not considered as profit. This is considered as the overhead or the cost in order for you to run the show, the run to to, to run this 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 online learning uh, e-platform, etc. It is not considered as profit. What is considered as profit is that you really make money out of it. You right. really make money of it. Okay, let's pick another question uh, by Ramla Jaffa at 3.12, uh, 3, at 3.12 p.m. Um, okay. I would like uh, to know copyright for USM thesis. Does it yeah. belong to USM or student? Very interesting questions. Uh, Common question. <laughs> Common question. Common question. Well. Okay. Uh, before May 2013, May 2013, uh, all thesis of students, PhD or master uh, dissertations uh, by research belong to the university. But by virtue of the Senate's uh, decision in May 2013, I can't remember the exact day, but I'm confident it's in May 2013, that uh, this is the uh, starting points that whereby the university decided that all thesis belong to the students. There are rationals about it. Uh, I remember I was the one who um, uh, have to bring along this motion. There are two school of thoughts. Uh, the first one is against it. Uh, it means that it belongs to the university. Uh, the other school of thought is that it should belong to the students. Uh, there are heated um, uh, discussions on it. Uh, because of uh, these two issues. Uh, we have looked at the experience from UK, uh, Europe uh, universities, US and also Australia and New Zealand, plus also local universities. Among the local universities, I remember UKM at that time and also I can't remember either UPM or UM, I can't remember, but UKM for sure. Uh, the, the thesis belong to the students. Okay, um, the issue arises because at that point of time, uh, the students has been, uh, um, has, has been um, um, at that point of time, um, uh, these students, they have been publishing their thesis as a book in this, with this predatory publishers. Okay, uh, and uh, when it becomes a book, uh, there was a lot of mistakes there. And of course, the issue of plagiarism come in. Okay, if it belongs to USM, the plagiarism issue will be very extensive to be handled. So these are among the things that we have been discussing at that point of time. And as a result, you see Senate, at least in USM, decided that it belongs to students. So <laughs> Outright answer is that it belongs to the students, period. So we, we let go our our copyright because we don't want to uh, burden with the. <laughs> but there is uh, so there there is a this uh, um, additional notes for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we call we call it saving clause, uh, whereby USM has the full right to use, reproduce, republish, uh, keep it in our um, library. Okay. Etc. All right. Uh, at three seventeen uh, p.m., Hazlin Aris would like to know more about copyright being automatically granted upon creation. Okay, so, this is yeah. interesting. Okay, uh, I use the word auto automatically granted upon creations. Okay, um, the general rule is that there are ten, ten types, at least, of intellectual property. Uh, types of intellectual property. In some countries, there are about 14, one four types of intellectual property. Okay. Among the, the famous one is, of course, patent. The second famous is copyright. And then there is industrial designs, geographical indications, secret, um, uh, trade secrets, and trademarks. Okay. Bear in mind, patent, in order for you to get protected, uh, for your inventions under patent, you need to file it. It's not automatic. 
So you need to file in order to get protection for your invention under patent. Okay, patent means that it must be there are steps of it. It must be novel. It must have industrial application. Second, for example, trademark. You need to file trademark in order for in order to get it protected. Trademarks, uh, brass jasmine, for example, uh, Milo, Overtin, etc. This is a trademarks. You need to file uh, trademark uh, in order to get it protected. Okay, but copyright. It is uh, an IP whereby it's not, it's no need to get, it's no need to file it in order to get protection. The copyright law all around the globe, not only in Malaysia, it says that uh, it is automatically granted upon creation. Once you, 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 you have done something, doesn't matter if long or not, uh, some, uh, for example, music, some songs, they are very short. Some songs are very long. As long as it is original, made in Malaysia, made by a qualified person, it is automatically granted of confession. In your case, of course, you are in, in your field doing your articles, etc. It is automatically uh, granted upon question. Yes, prior to MIPO um, allowing people to register with them, MIPO only allow this a mechanism back in 2015 or 2016, very new. Uh, okay, prior to 2015, uh, people used two kinds of um, um, uh, options or methods in order to protect their uh, copyright. First, they, they get the ISBN number from the library, but that is not the number for protections of Copyright is just a national library numbers. The other way that they say that they they, they send something to uh, uh, through the post so that it will be chalk stamp on the envelope and then post it back to them and then they keep it just to say that it's either under copyright or under trade secrets. They say because it will be on the stamping of the things, but people mishandle it by putting the, the other documents into the envelope. Okay, the envelope can contain many things, many other documents as well. So it's been misused as well. So, um, but bear in mind the law, the copyright act says, no need to register. It's automatically um, protected, huh? protected upon question. Automatically protected or automatically granted upon question, the same. Okay, even in US also, they file in the public uh, libraries in the United States, okay, but there is no proper registrations of it because it's still automatic, automatic granted upon question. Okay, so these are the the, the law of copyright. Um, um, you you may find it's funny, but bear in mind, I want to give another example. Patent. Remember, the lifetime uh, of patent is twenty years. Okay. The lifetime of copyright is 50 years, 50 tahun. But that's not all. The copyright lifetime is 50 years from the death of the author, not from the from the date of the creations. <laughs> this is another another <laughs> law, uh, the complicated law about the the the. the. So the death. Okay. So uh, uh, question coming. If I have three authors. Uh, when it will start from the death of the last author, even not the death of the first author. That's why Piramli's uh, relative may still uh, enjoy the royalty because of this 50 years from the death of Piramli. Piramli died in 1974. So, uh, Dr. Hyrule, um, if we don't register our copyright, and someone infringe our copyright, what kind of evidence we can produce in the court? Okay. Um, when someone infringe uh, the copyright, so you need to show to the court about the infringement. Let me share with you one of the um, slides that may be relevant. There are a okay. few slides that are relevant. Okay, go ahead. I think that's a good, uh, that's a good time to show more on that because uh, there's a lot of question whether we should Register or not? Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Hold a sec, Rob. We see how it goes. Okay. 
Okay, so. Okay. Okay. Prof, let's yeah. look at it. Mm -hmm. This is called, uh, one of the example of plagiarism. Okay. Uh, one of the example of plagiarism whereby plagiar A and plagiar B. You can see um, this is the actual case that we have. Uh, I have taken as an example. Okay. Um, bug one, bug four, and bug five. Look at the, the how how they just uh, uh, do some little paraphrasing. But this is examples uh, at the world level, where people give examples of how it looks like for plagiarism and also for copyright, and also for copyright. So. Uh, um, those colors indicates the whereabouts of the paragraph. Okay, the 2011 has plagiarized the work of 2007. Okay, uh, you see uh, how they put it into the position uh, in, in way of position wise, whereby actually uh, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Okay, okay. This is a case of yours to answer your question. We have one case whereby back in 2012, uh, Fozila Saleh versus University of Malaysia Terengganu. This is quite a recent case, eight years ago, whereby uh, the main issue of this case is not about breach of copyright. It's not about plagiarism. The base, this, uh, this case is talking about the natural justice, right to be heard before someone can be sacked from his or her university right to be heard. But during the course of the proceeding, the judge has also uh, discussed about the issue of plagiarism. Okay, okay. Uh, whereby uh, in this case, why the university sacked uh, this Fozila Saleh? Because uh, the university found out that it, she has plagiarized her thesis. Okay. But Fazila, bear in mind, Fazila Saleh sued university because of natural justice, right to be heard. Okay, and she won the case. But the court did give some elaboration on the term of plagiarism. Let's look at this uh, sentence. Uh, the court says 35% of the plaintiff's thesis has been taken from doctoral dissertation of one Professor Madia, Dr. Nick Kamaria. Although the plaintiff has acknowledged her sources of information, the plaintiff has failed to footnote information source on the relevant pages. It's not enough. There are many other, um, uh, um, um, the, the, the TC has not have enough um, acknowledgement or citations. Okay. And this is where the courts come into conclusion, whereby the court in a particular judgment the court has put it how much the percentage of the plagiarism. Okay, first chapter of uh, consisted of 30%, second chapter of 20%, uh, third and fourth chapter, which is the most critical one, okay, at 60 and 58% respectively, and uh, this uh, conclusion chapter has a uh, 13%. So this is how the court decides on this copyright or plagiarism issue. In this case, remember, the plagiarism is not a matter of court uh, jurisdiction, but the court just passing the remark in order to decide on the natural justice why she has been sacked from the university. Okay, so come back to your question. You said that how, uh, how the court will decide on the copyright, the court will decide what is the, grav the gravity of the breaching of copyright? How many percent? Is it serious? Uh, is it be amplified with? Is it has the encouragement from you, for example, before they have copyright you? Okay, whether you have been working with them previously or you have been collaborating with them, suddenly the collaboration broke down and then you didn't blah, blah, blah. So the court will take into consideration of all such things and the important paramount things the court will decide is that how much the company make profit out of your copyright. If let's say they make profit of hundred thousand, then you have good opportunity to, to, to get more than hundred thousand as damages or compensation prof. But if they only get one thousand ringgit, you will have the chance to get one thousand ringgit as compensation 
plus you have to cover your cost, your legal cost. Okay. Um, but um, my my question just now was, um, if I don't register my copyright, if I want to sue someone in the court for infringement, uh, what is the evidence that this is my original work? Because I don't know, I have not registered it with uh, my co. You 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 have to uh, put it as an evidence in court. For example, mm -hmm. um, this copyright. For example, okay, okay, you when people copy you, okay you will have to produce your original work. This original work is Osama Bin Laden, Growing Anxiety, October 26, 2007. Mm -hmm. The court want to know whether it is really in October 2007. You have to produce some evidence, for example, from your email or even simply from your publication. Or um, you must prove to court that it is 2007. You have come out with a book or an article back mm -hmm. then, and then uh, the court want to see. Then this is we consider as the evidence. Okay, so you have to uh, prove first the date of your original work, because you are now alleging the other, the other side for copywriting you. Okay, so, so you have to... Yeah, so the burden, the burden of the proof, the onus is on, on the original author, right? Uh, in law, the burden of proof is always on the plaintiff, the person the who plaintiff. start the suit, uh -huh. the person who start suing. So, uh, okay, wouldn't wouldn't be bet, wouldn't it be better if uh, we just um, at the point of creation uh, after that uh, we just register at the MIPO, then that will become the evidence. Um, it, it will be costly for you as well, although it's a 37, 38 <laughs> ringgit. But if you have one, it doesn't matter. But uh -huh. I guess men. Um, many have many, uh, so it, so it's not it's not it's not wise. Okay, but the most important part is that if you are registering yours, man, mm -hmm. okay, you may have some improvements to the writing, mm -hmm. and you have to refile again for the improvements. So it is it, not oh. it may not be uh, just or possible to do to do that. Okay, okay, yeah. okay so yeah. All right. Um, I think that's a, a good elaboration on the, whether we should register our copyright or not, uh, and the meaning of auto automated. Uh, sorry, apa ni? Automatically granted upon creation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's pick up another uh, question from uh, at three twenty p.m. Nick Aniz Azimatol. Yes. The whole page of my PhD thesis has been uploaded online by university. Now I have trouble to publish article related to my PhD since the similarity index will be quite high. Uh, yes, uh, to answer this first, university, your university have the right to upload it because you have signed uh, the, uh, the form before you submit the thesis. Okay, so how to actually to resolve your your similarity index? I guess uh, I've been told that if you have turned it in, etc., they have uh, you can request uh, for for the similarity index to be deleted or once uh, if you want to uh, first want to check on the similarity index, you can um, have the options of um, save or not. To save your 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 checking, so there is a tool to that, um, but it's not a complex one. It, it means that first, I will answer that your university have the right to have it uploaded online because that's the university rules, and you have agreed and have to abide by that university rules. Um, but I think your issue is about the similarity index will be quite high. You can discuss with the persons um, um, who knows best in turning in, for example, they, they, they can advise you properly. And uh, the follow up of, of that, uh, Nick Azimato said, uh, can I write a letter to the publisher to address this issue, meaning that to inform the publisher that uh, the TC has been uploaded online by the university? Um, yes, you can. Yes, you can. But uh, I guess most publishers, they're aware about it. The only thing that um, you, 
uh, Nik Azimato would, would like to do is that to 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 liaise with the with this um, uh, checkers with, with this tool like the in or plagiarism checker etc. So they have the 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 ways in order to resolve it. Prof, betul ini benda-benda ni simulate index boleh you have the option to on or off. I think so. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Uh, but that's on our side. Uh, yeah. But on the publisher side, they might have their own checking. Uh, so maybe not using internet in, maybe using other tools. So I, I think that the option here is to inform, and there must be some evidence also on the author's side that the university has uploaded the thesis, and that is actually one of the uh, requirement or one of the um, one of the university's uh, kind of right. So we cannot cannot avoid that. So they have to inform the publisher that yeah, situation. Yeah. yeah, and I guess all the publishers aware about it that <laughs> their PhD thesis, uh, it must be uh, put into the repository okay. uh, of the particular universities. Wow, there there are a lot more question here, uh, Dr. Hyrule. But I think uh, let let's try to address uh, the next one at three to twenty one p.m. Dr. Noazman said, "Can online learning be both?" plagiarism as well as copyright infringement yes yes it can be it can, can be, be eh? it can be but remember plagiarism we have to deal it academically academically it means that within the university ecosystem copyright you need to go to the court in order to get your rights so plagiarism we need to 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 deal it within the university ecosystem for example when someone been alleged as uh, as to plagiarize some, some, somebody one somebody else uh, work uh, there will be a procedures for it for example while i'm using it this is our procedures for usm okay tata cara tata cara uh, pertuduhan salah laku ciplakan tesis sarjana uh, and then this is tata tata cara pengendalian uh, general uh, plagiarism so you have to deal it within the universities uh, let's say if there is a uh, grounds uh, for plagiarism uh, then it need the case will be elevated to the disciplinary committee. So disciplinary committee will decide whether it is plagiarism or not. Uh, uh, yeah, um, but for copyright, you need to enforce it in court. You need to enforce it in court. Okay. Uh, the next one, I think, is more more like a comment. Oops. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, next one is at three point. Uh, sorry, at four. Sorry uh, again. Uh, sorry. Three twenty three p.m. just now. Um, by. Nor any m. Yep. Okay. Plagiarism can also be seen as person who is not gentleman or lady in term of his his word, not giving credit to anyone. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> this is about plagiarism. Definitely, yeah. this is about plagiarism. Okay. So at okay. 3.24, we have one. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Can we mention the name of the company like publisher during e-learning in public? Yes, you can. Uh, this is kind of uh, acknowledgement as well, which is good. Because mm -hmm. while you are doing that, you are also acknowledging that, look, this is the publisher, but for, for example, uh, Wiley, Pearson, etc. So it, it, it's good and it's recommended to do that. It's a good, it's a good practice, yeah? Yes. Okay. So we have that to Sri Saliapa there. Dato Sri Saliapa. <laughs> okay. Dr. Zame, Dr. Zame there uh, at 325. Okay. Copyright versus trade secret. Okay. Which one has higher value for USM? Okay. Both <laughs> has higher value for USM. For example, copyright is much more relevant in terms of the academic promotions for the academicians. Uh, this copyright is always uh, a, a twin for uh, for the promotions for the professors, uh, associate professors, senior lecturers, etc. Whereby trade secrets, you are talking about commercializing your product, commercializing your invention or your something that you have created. Trade secret. Uh, mm -hmm. Trade secrets have a very little impact on your on your uh, promotion. Whereby, if a trade secret becomes commercialization, successful commercialization, then it will have a great impact. Then, 
but trade secrets remain uh, in the vault or remain in the safe safe box. It does not have a, an impact towards the the promotion. But copyright, yes, even though it's in safe box, it's been published. It has the impact. Trade secrets, you need to uh, save it somewhere in the safe box, uh, not your own safe box, but other people's safe box in order to 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 to, to be considered as a trade secret. So um, I would say it has a different value in different terms. Copyright for your promotions, editor, for your uh, life as an academician, trade secret in order for you to commercialize your product. So there are two different things here. Uh, it depends. It depends. Okay. Uh, next, we have at 3.25 from SU. Okay. You... you can we use the information from the particular thesis or publication but mentioned in the reference section? Can we? In the, no, you, you, you need to be properly cited. You cannot put it in the reference section alone. You need to cite it. Uh, if it's book, that's fine. But if it's an article, etc., uh, in this, uh, you, you need to mention it uh, as a citation. Okay? Okay. Okay. The next, next one at three. Why trade secret does not appear as a mark on USM HCM? Okay, um, okay. HCMS version three system is not a trade secret. It's a trademark. M A R K trademark. Trade secret and trademark is different. Two different things. Trade secret no need to register. Trademarks you need to register. Trademark is like computer ESA. ESA is a trademark. Uh, there is a trademark. For example, okay. Trade secret is how. How Dell system is much more what uh, um, advanced than the other brand, uh, for example. That is the trade secret. For example, trade secret is like Coca-Cola. It's a trade secret. KFC. Okay. Uh, people, people say that uh, um, um, uh, Ayam Medi will is not this the, uh, similar to KFC. Burger and McD will not taste similar to um, KFC. So it's a trade secret. It's a trade secret. Uh, okay. Dr. Hyrule, I think Dr. Zamir's question there, uh, what, what he, 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 he meant that is actually the trade secret is not given marks, it's not given point. I think that's the. Yeah, because uh, as I said just now, trade secret will not give an impact until it is commercialized. Oh, okay. Okay. Trade secrets. Uh, you can have trade secrets, Prof. For example, mm -hmm. how to to make sure that you have a great audience for Zoom, for example, for your <laughs> online session. You have trade secret. But unless you commercialize it as a, another Zoom, <laughs> then 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 it will have impact on your ACMS version three. But okay. trade secrets alone, it will not have impact without any commercialization or licensing. You okay. license to others. You create some things and impact and make money. Trade secrets, in short, in, 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 in summary, will only create impact if it creates money. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one, 326. Muhammad Nora, Norani there. Okay. If we use PowerPoint materials from books, providers, Pearson, for online teaching and post in YouTube, should we provide the book provider's logo while teaching? Okay. If we use PowerPoint materials from books providers, example Pearson for online teaching and post in YouTube, should we provide the book provider's logo while teaching? No need. It's not. Because uh, I guess in this case, PowerPoint materials from book providers, they have the obligation to put it, not, not us. If they didn't put it, we don't have any obligations to put it. Um, if I do a, a video recording, um, and I use this PowerPoint from Pearson, and then I put this recorded video on YouTube. Would that constitute copyright infringement? Okay, you, when you got it from uh, Pearson, mm -hmm. it is uh, you you have used it exactly from Pearson's CD or from yeah. soft copy. So no, it's not considered as uh, breach of copyright. No, because Pearson has expressly consent for the use of it. Oh, expressly, implicitly, right? Express yes. the consent. Um, uh, expressly, 
Yeah. Explicitly, not implicitly. Explicitly, ah, consent. Explicitly. Oh hi. Okay. Consent to it. Oh okay. All right. Um, okay. Um, the next one at three twenty six. Come la Java. From your experience, what is the common issues related to copyright in USM? Okay. In, in interesting. Uh, will be uh issue. Okay. The <laughs> so many popular, issues. the most popular one is will be boncengan gratis, <laughs> free riding. Free riding. The, uh, um, among the uh, the serious one also is that uh, of of um, uh, affiliations, affiliations whereby um, uh, not the correct the correct uh, authors been. Uh, um, not not the correct authors or affiliations to the university has been omitted in, in their particular um, articles, etc. Um, the other serious one is the um, forged data. Or um, um, there is uh, malpractice on data. I would say uh, collection of data, etc. So these are issues about copyright. Uh, apart from it, of course, predators journal uh, issues of predators journal. Um, these those blacklisted journals, um, and um, we have also close relationship publications as well, uh, which are also issues in copy uh, copyright. Um, we would say in USM, we every three to four months, we we normally receive one or particular complaints about plagiarisms. Uh, but yeah, some plagiarisms may have basis, some may not. But there are there are consistent numbers of plagiarism issues being lodged to the universities because now people are more aware about plagiarism compared to pre two thousand ten. Uh, so that's what we anticipated more about plagiarism. So these are among the common issues um, in USM. Uh, okay, next, at, Prof. Yeah, next uh, we have at 3.28, Janet. Janet. Can it still be yeah. plagiarism if we also acknowledge the author? No. If we acknowledge the author, it's not plagiarism. It's not plagiarism. It's a proper, uh, properly, it's properly done. But if we take two big paragraph and then acknowledge the author so is that can can that be considered plagiarism no no if you are properly acknowledging them it's not considered plagiarism it's not considered plagiarism plagiarism is something uh, stealing other people's words and consider uh, and make it as yours so it's it's about uh, it's about stealing uh, other people's words and state as yours Okay, uh, three twenty-eight from Nick Gazimatol again. My PowerPoint has been uploaded by someone on online platform without my consent. The problem is I am not yet credited all images information to the respective personal uh, publisher. What can I do? Okay, okay. Um, first of all, you need to identify the person who has uploaded it online without your consent. Only then you can address the particular personal, uh, the particular persons that um, first, of course, he or she has uploaded without your consent. Second is that um, he need to be liable for those illegal informations uh, because it's not been, you, you have not done the credit or said, uh, properly acknowledge that. Okay, so first you need to identify the person first. Only in order to identify a person, you know his or her email address, for example, you need to send an email to them. Or even though you didn't know him or her, you need to send an email. That email is sufficient to safeguard or protect yourself from being alleged as the um, not, 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 not doing the right thing. So um, that email is sufficient to do it. But our main problem is that you can't identify them. Okay, if you can identify them, as long as you put it somewhere that 
uh, for example, in this situation, you have posted to us that you have these situations. Uh, this posting itself can be uh, used as uh, an evidence to safeguard yourself. Look, uh, you, I have asked uh, on 30th of March 2020 during an online learning uh, sessions that this is my problem. And the advice was that I need to evidence it uh, and, and I evidence it through my posting just now. So need, need, need to do something, need to record it, need to record it. Uh, if somebody allege you, uh, ma'am, uh, then you have some evidence to safeguard your interest. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we have similar question at 3.29 by Jehana Ermi. Yeah. Uh, if we cite the book, example, instead by paraphrasing, paraphrasing is fine. Uh, the correct way in order to avoid plagiarism is paraphrasing. If you can't do the paraphrasing or you copycat the whole lot, you copycat... Uh, almost the whole thing, you have to cite, you have to acknowledge. If you use it in your own ways, understand it in your own ways, then it is okay. But remember, paraphrasing cannot be done for real data, for data, for, for data collections, for the data that you have collected. So that, that is not paraphrasing, that is copy. Okay, uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, in advanced country, US and UK, they have even considered as literature review, if there is similarity on the literature review, it may not amount to plagiarism. But that is the approach taken in advanced country at the moment. But Malaysia, we still say that even literature review, if it's a, what, um, um, the big amount of, um, uh, the big amount of write-up was taken in verbatim from others is still considered as plagiarism. But remember, plagiarism also have different types, plagiarized works in the literature review and in the uh, uh, chapter 4 will be different punishments. We have different impact as well. Okay, In chapter 1 or 2, it will be different from those uh, plagiarized works in chapter 3 and chapter 4. Okay. Um, at prof, three, yeah. Prof, prof, can I um? You want to share some slide? So no, no. Can I um need to charge my phone? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, right. hold a sec. I I get okay. my. I, I just do some some simple okay. things to plug my phone. Okay, okay, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, uh, meanwhile, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for posting these questions. Um, I'm not sure whether we can now address all this. We will try. Uh, because now it's already uh, four, almost 4.30. Uh, but if you want to stay on, uh, we will try to we will we will try to address the rest of the questions. Um, okay, we will go one by one because really we want to make this session very useful for those who spend time to join. Uh, to ask any doubts, any questions on copyright as well as plagiarism. These are two very closely related things. Okay. So um, we have at 3.32, we will we'll, we'll pick up these questions. Okay. <laughs> You're okay there, Dr. Khairul? Okay, yeah, I'm okay. Okay. So we'll, let, let's pick up at 3.22, uh, Dr. Zamel. Um, yeah. 3.22. Yeah. Dr. Zamel uh, Fakhruddin, about the research students citing. Wow. Well, I can yeah. go to 322. Yeah. I can go to 322. I can go only to up to 324. Oh, yeah. Okay, 322. Uh, what is it, bro? Okay. Um, let me read. Maybe you want to uh, ref refresh your YouTube, maybe. Okay, uh, uh, let me read. A research student citing his publication in his thesis. Does USM call the student self plagiarized? 
Okay, uh, uh, again, Prof. Okay. Okay. So, a uh, research student yep. citing his publication, his own publication in his thesis. So, does USM call this case a student, the student self plagiarized? Can we say the student self plagiarized? Okay. Um, um, important and careful answer from me. Okay. <laughs> if you cite your own work in your next publication, is not self plagiarism. Self plagiarism applies if you didn't cite at all your previous your previous uh, articles into the present articles. Okay, so it's a tricky answer. If you cite it, it will not be considered as a self plagiarism. But if you don't cite it, but you took it in verbatim and didn't cite your own previous article, it is self plagiarism. Okay. 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 So, uh, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Self plagiarism in some institutions is not regarded an offense, but in most institutions, regard it as an offense. Regard it as an offense. For example, I have published, for example, in 2017, an article entitled A. But in 2020, I took up almost 75% of that article, add up another 25% and become a whole new title, a whole new things and republish it without, without citing my previous 2017 articles. That is self-plagiarism. All right. Okay. okay. But if I cite it, that's fine. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, let's look at uh, 332, another one from Jehana. Can, can you see on your phone? 332. Yeah, Jehana, Ermi. 332, 332. Okay, Jehana, okay. Yeah. If I recorded my students' video during class, the video copyright is owned by lecturer and university. Yes, it's owned by lecturer and university. Yes, you are right. It's not owned by the student, no. It's okay. owned by the lecturer and the university, yes. It's always a, like a joint. Can we say that it's a joint copyright? Uh, no, it's not joint. It's not joint. Everyone is entitled for. Ah. Uh, is everyone is entitled for? Uh, for their own uh, ownership. Okay, I give you an example. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I didn't put it into my. I didn't put it into my slide. Okay, situation okay. like this. A situation like this. A, a real one. Back in two thousand nine. Uh, there was a case filed in Kuala Lumpur High Court. It been filed by one of our Seniman Negara. Mm -hmm. I remember this Seniman. This involved an act, an archer near the OCBC Bank in Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. This act has been designed by this Seniman Negara back in 1975. And this Seniman Negara has donated it to DBKL for free without, without any single sense. In 2008, they want DBKL have renovated the, the ark without the consent from the from the from the Seniman Negara. Remember, this Seniman Negara designed it, donated it for free for DBKL. Who's the owner now? The owner is DBKL. But he still have the moral honor ownership in him. In him, remember the moral ownership, even moral. though he has donated it to DBKL. So in 2008, DBKL has, has renovated uh, the art without his consent. And as a result, the art become a totally different art, totally different art, renovate the whole lot. And he sued, he sued DBKL for 750K. And the court awarded him Seniman Negara for 750k. Wow. <laughs> uh, even though, remember, the, the keyword is that he has donated it to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to DBKL. So DBKL defense at that particular time, which we also want to see whether the court acknowledged the moral ownership or not, DBKL uh, fought the case simply because he has donated to us. Why, why we want to pay for 750k? The court says, no, you are the owner, but the 
original uh, author which is the moral has the moral ownership of it you need to get consent from this cinema negara 750k this is a well well uh, um, well referred case in term of how the court acknowledge the ownership of of the particular particular nila oh that's interesting so let's say any any of the things that i produce during my the course of my work with usm after i retire if usm decide to use my material they they still need to have my consent right yes apply uh, to everyone bro apply uh, to this participant yeah. <laughs> uh, to the participant as well yeah okay. still, the your university yeah. still have to get yeah. the, the 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 consent interesting interesting Okay. It's a real case. Uh, 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 publish uh, this case has been published by the court in 2010. Hmm. Uh, you can, uh, I, but I can't remember this seniman negara. If you Google this seniman negara OCBC DBKL, you can, you will definitely get this this case. Hmm. Seniman negara OCBC DBKL. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Harold, let's go to the next one. Um, 3:33 there, uh, Nora ini. Uh, on that question, can someone okay. take lots? Can yeah. someone take lots of ideas, lots of ideas, academic, published online, from what's on the internet? Can someone take lots of ideas, academic? Yes, idea is not protected, bro. Idea mm -hmm. is not protected. You can take yeah. uh, any ideas and <laughs> consider yours, but uh, realize it. M realize it. Make it happen. M make it make do with it so it will you, not you, become it will not stay as ideas you have to express it in a tangible format yes right? yes yeah. ideas is not protected i have the ideas to have a car that can fly only during the uh, heavy jam so it can <laughs> yeah so it's an idea no problem okay, okay. the the, okay. the following question again by no id and create a page online based on these ideas without providing reference for all educational purposes. If idea, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Idea, okay. no problem. The next one, okay, no, Azman just, Dr. No, Azman just uh, say thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 334 there from Ali Salihabadi. What is the issues related to the copyright of images from Pink Interest? Pinterest. Pinterest. Pinterest is actually, if, uh, I don't know whether you know, it's yeah, a social, yeah. Uh, it's a social media where people actually take pictures uh, from other website, then pin on their dashboard. So it's actually okay, it's, like it, it's similar to Shutterstock. Uh, not not really. They are just curating, just compiling pictures from many places on one place in one place in their own uh, so-called Pinterest dashboard. What is the difference between Pinterest and Shutterstock or Jetty Images? Um, what is the difference? Shutterstock is actually the basically the repository of pictures or images yeah. where you can buy the you can buy the picture for your own use. Um, but Pinterest is actually a social media, just like Facebook. But it's a place where actually people, um, let's say I have a Pinterest, I can take pictures from different website, then I can actually put it on my own Pinterest account in one place. It's like, we call it curation, uh, compiling everything. This is like, uh, Pinterest is something like uh, Twitter, it's a platform, is it? Yeah, it's, it's a platform. It's a yeah. platform, it's a platform for, so that I gather all nice photos from outside that I got it from the internet. Yes, yes. And collect it as myself, okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, okay, uh, if, if I post back this question, if mm -hmm. let's say I got, I, I, I take three photos from Jetty Images and put in my pink interest, mm -hmm. Jetty Images will, can sue me, can still sue me for, uh, for taking the Jetty Images, put it in my pink interest, my pink interest, even though I, I did it, just for fun or hobby or for my own collection. Am I right, bro? Yeah, uh, let, let me show you. Let me share the screen. Um, I'll show you what the Pinterest looks like. Okay. Um, okay. 
to all participants i'm i, I i'm not having any <laughs> twitter or yeah. facebook etc <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, pinterest okay so in in pinterest actually um, so let's say i just take uh, any of this so this is actually pinterest by uh, this person and what she does is actually um, let me just go back yeah so you can see there, there are many pictures on this screen right so each one of these picture is actually a website it can be an article from a website this one another article from website so what basically how to how to get all this when i go to a, any website if i like the article I just pin, that's why it's called Pinterest. I just pin the website and it will go to my Pinterest account. So it's a collection of article. Uh, each article is represented by a picture and this picture is taken from that particular website. Automatically, it will extract the image from that website and it will display, it's very visual. So each one of this picture is actually from coming from a different website. Okay. If yeah. that is the case, I will answer like this. Why is there issues related to the copyright of images from Pink Eaters? If yeah. you are getting it uh, from uh, what uh, Google images, etc., and then uh, doesn't have any, uh, the, the photos doesn't have any restriction of it, there will, there will be no problem of it. But if, they, if you take photos from this uh, uh, paid, paid photos supposed to be paid photos, then you will still have the copyright issue. So it depends from the source that you paid. Um, from... as, as far as I understand, uh, Dr. Hyrule, because it's actually uh, something called curation. And it's just like we take a video from YouTube, we can embed in our website. So embedding and linking to the YouTube, I think that is to me uh, is acceptable uh, practice and is included actually in terms of use by YouTube. So I think there's a similar situation here. Uh, but, uh, yeah. But Prof, um, why I answer that it may have the copyright issue because it doesn't fall to any of the limbs in the fair use. Mm -hmm. It's not falls under the limb of uh, fair use. If, if not falls under any limbs of the fair use, it may... Uh, amount to breach of copyright. Okay. Uh, our our main our main issue here is to be practical only. Uh, means that if we just do the pink interest for fun for hobby etc., you the the company any company may not be after you. But if you are doing it for business and creating profits etc., then uh -huh. there will be issues in relation to it. But uh -huh. I look at it how the photos are uh, linked to the to this pink trust, it will not fall to any of the limb or any of the exceptions of fair use. It doesn't, so, doesn't come under the scope of fair use. Yeah, yeah it does not yeah. come under the scope of fair use. Because okay. for us, uh, if it is for educational purpose, definitely it comes under the fair use. Uh, okay. Educational purpose. I think we have maximum uh, the most uh, 20 minutes or 15 minutes uh, from now. Because I yeah. don't want to extend it longer than uh, longer than that, so maybe let's pick uh, pick uh, let's say uh, from Allah uh, three thirty four there, Allah Allah Bab Dr Abbas here. Uh, Dr Allah Dr Allah from School uh, of um, yeah. um, Bahasa Language. Bahasa. Language. Uh, if I develop a website to administer online assessment, the copyrights belong to me. If I develop a website to administer online assessment, the copyright belongs to me. Yes belongs to you and belong to the university. Okay, my school, the funders, uh, assuming it's a grant and it's from outsiders or USM. Okay, definitely it belongs to you because you are the creator of that online assessment. Definitely it belongs to you. Remember, I said that there will be two ownership. One's uh, the moral ownership whereby it belongs to you. The other one, it, whether it's belong to USM or the funder, it depends on the terms by the funder if the if you are getting the grants the government grants normally uh, it will not be fussy about who owns the ip but if it is a 
external grant from the industry as well, it may have some uh, terms that it may belong or jointly belong to both parties. So my answer is that it belongs to you definitely as a moral owner and also to USM as an employer or co-join with uh, with the funder, with the funder. Okay, I okay. think that's a very clear answer. Um, okay, uh, 335 from Naz, Nazri. Okay. Is it sufficient to use an image from a publication and just add the citation? Yes, you can. It's, yes, it's sufficient. Yes, as long as as long as we give as the you citations. do the citation, uh, oh, plagiarism right. is always about the citations. Okay. Um, I am using my class as part of my research on teaching and learning, and already told my students about it and obtained their written consent. Can I then use their photos in my papers, etc.? Yes, you can. Definitely, you can. Particularly in this case, we have obtained the written consent. Even though without the written consent, if you have the uh, verbal consent, is enough. Is enough. Verbal consent sometimes can be can means that when they are when you are taking their photos, they are acting uh, happily, etc. So that is also considered as a verbal oh, consent. Okay. okay, okay. Janet, there at three thirty nine, just a comment about litigation, litigation can take many years yeah. to enforce your rights on copyright. Yes, it is range between one year minimum to five years. Most of cases, I would say, uh, usually it will take about two to three years. Believe me, it if it is um, 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 if, if you need to be very definite when you are suing people uh, uh, on this matter because litigation can cost a lot of money, can cost a lot of money. Definitely, it will take years. No court case uh, can finish uh, less than one year. I said while uh, it can be minimum one year if you can settle the case outside court. Settle case outside court normally is just by both parties agree not to do it again. <laughs> but both parties bear their own legal costs. That's, oh, okay. that, that's not good actually. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Hairul, uh, Jehana, they're at 340, 341 and 342. Maybe you can address together. We may have only one copyright on the textbook, not the copyright for the students then. Can we upload the students' version? Okay. Uh, we may have only one copyright of the textbook. Yes, okay, okay. Not the copyright for the students then. Can we upload the student version? For myself, bro. Yeah, I'm not very sure here. Not the okay, copyright I, I, for I, I, the students. I guess, okay. I guess, yes, we may have only one copyright of the textbook. The copyright can, can be in groups, no problem. It can be in groups, not copyright. does not only belong to individuals. It can be belong to individuals. Oh, many, many, many peoples. Okay, if there are three authors, uh, yes, it belongs to three authors. Uh, but how many percentage will depend um, uh, discreetly or internally among them? Uh, the first author may be sixty percent, second author twenty, third author twenty. It is discreetly agreed between them, but they both sorry, the three of them are authors. Okay, the percentage will depend. So okay. it can be, can yeah. we upload the student version? No need because the copyright can be to the students and to the academicians. Okay, Dr. Khairul, uh, it seems that uh, well, uh, we have a lot more questions there. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't think, uh, uh, although we said that we, we will try, we do our best to answer, but uh, this already, I think, quite long uh, session here. Um, yep. How do we... How do we address the rest of the question? Uh, is it possible later on you can, if you can find time to maybe try to answer on the chat there? Uh, not now, maybe later on. Okay, so I just need to enter to the Facebook. Uh, yeah, to yeah. This, to, to this, the, the same, the same link. Yeah. Okay. How to ensure that I let's say for uh, answers partner up? How to answer that I I'm answering three forty three. Fana uh, just, R. Yeah, you just put the add Fana R 343, then. Oh, okay, uh, okay, think, okay. Yeah. So at least uh, I know it will take uh, some, some time, but uh, I think it would be good if, if we can address all the questions slowly yeah. uh, when you can find time. Uh, and this will be also a good reference for those who, join, who, who are not able to join the session. They can go through the question and the answers uh, as well um, for those questions that 
uh, we don't have time to address during this session. Can can we yeah. do can we do that, yeah. Hero? Okay, I can do that. Uh, give yeah. me um, yeah, one day will be enough for me to, yeah. to answer it. <laughs> okay. Provided um, so. Wow, panjang. Uh, okay, four forty seven. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can take time. You take your time. Uh, even even those questions which we have answered also during the session, if you want to write it in writing as well. I think because this will be a very good uh, resource uh, for everyone, not only for USM staff, but for everyone. Uh, I think we have covered quite a quite a wide area about copyright as well as uh, plagiarism, uh, and this is actually the first time that we we do it. Uh, I'm sure there are, there'll be a lot more questions. So uh, I guess uh, we can um, uh, stop uh, at this point. So yeah. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Hyrule. I know Dr. Hyrule is very, very, very busy. We have a mm -hmm. lot of legal issues that for university to address, at least, especially at this moment. Um, so but thank you for, for making your time to entertain our participants and to answer their questions. It's always as I, I always say that copyright is not black and white thing. It's always a gray, a lot of gray area. There's a lot of ambiguity. There's a lot of uncertainty. So uh, only those experts can really answer the, the questions. So for that, with that, um, thank a you prop, for, a, yeah. Prop, one last thing for me. Uh -huh. uh, to those who want to have a copy of my slide, it's not, uh, I'm going, uh, it's free. It's okay. not considered plagiarized uh, for those <laughs> who want to take up or use okay. as the ass, okay? Because in order for in order to, the thing to be plagiarized, I need to accuse or to allege. So in this case, I won't do the, any allegation later. Please use my slide. But those who want my slide, please email to kaha, K-A-H-A at usm.my. Kaha, Kairul Anwar Haji Azmi at USM my kaha at USM my I'm happy to to share my thirty three slides uh, here in uh, to those who who want to share uh, who want to to have a further reading on it. I will and, reply yeah. all as well. Dr. Hairul, can also put in the chat box later your email just in case uh, others. Uh -huh, Aha, chat box. Uh, chat box. Yeah, chat box. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget. So with that, thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you once again, Dr. Hyrule, and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, um, please join us in other sessions, uh, maybe this week or next week. So thank you and see you again. Thank you, Dr. Hyrule. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, Prof. Thank you. Bye -bye. for initiating this. Bye. Yeah, thank you.